As many of you have already noticed, with Tailwind CSS version 4, there is no tailwind.config.js file anymore. Instead, you can now configure all your customizations directly in the CSS file. According to the creator of Tailwind CSS, this is one of the biggest changes with version 4. So it's very likely that it will affect you and that you need to learn about this new CSS first approach if you want to keep using Tailwind CSS in the future. In previous versions of Tailwind, the tailwind.config.js file was where you handled all configurations. For most projects, this file probably looked something like this, with a content section where you list all your content files, a theme section for customization, as well as a plugin section for importing your plugins, and maybe also some options like dark mode and prefix. But since the tailwind.config.js file was removed with the release of version 4, at least by default, here's what you need to know and how things work with the new version. I'll cover the four main or most common sections of the tailwind.config.js file and I'll talk about the theme section last because it's the most extensive part. So let's start with the content section. This is where you used to configure the paths to all of your HTML templates, JavaScript components and any other files that contain Tailwind class names. But with Tailwind version 4, this is now fully automated. That means that Tailwind detects all of this automatically, so you no longer need to configure it yourself. The plugins section. In Tailwind version 3, this section allows you to register plugins with Tailwind that can be used to generate extra utilities, components or custom variants. For example, if you have used Daisy UI or Flowbyte before, you had to manually import the plugin right here like this. However, some plugins like ShadCN for example handle this automatically. So when you install ShadCN in Tailwind version 3, the CLI configures everything for you and if you check your tailwind.config.js file afterward, you'll see that the necessary imports were added automatically like this line here for example, or that line. But in Tailwind version 4, plugin imports now work differently. Instead of adding them to the tailwind.config.js file, you now import plugins directly in your global CSS file. In my case, that's the index.css. And you can do that by adding the following line at the top of this file. Add plugin. And then, for example, Daisy UI, like that. Of course, you still need to install Daisy UI first for this to work, and also make sure that you use the latest version. Daisy UI 5 just launched its public beta with the stable version dropping on March 1st, and that's the version you should use with Tailwind version 4. You'll find the new installation guide as well as all other important links in the description box down below. Also, ShadCN doesn't fully support Tailwind CSS version 4 yet, but they are already working on an update. There is a workaround if you really need it, but I would recommend waiting for the official update and the new documentation, which shouldn't be too long. Moving on, there is also the prefix option. It allows you to add a custom prefix to all of Tailwind's generated utility classes. That means if you add that line here in your tailwind.config.js file, you then have to use this prefix, uh, in my case tw- for all Tailwind classes. So instead of class name text orange 500, I would now have to say class name tw- text orange 500. But in Tailwind version 4, prefixes are no longer set in JavaScript files. Instead, you now also configure them directly in your CSS file. You just need to add the following part at the very top where you import Tailwind CSS. You have to say prefix and in here you say, for example, tw, like that. One major change here, previously many users prefix classes with tw- dash, like I just showed you but this is no longer possible with version 4. Now prefixes must be separated by a column. That means in my example, the prefix is tw, so I have to add this prefix followed by a column to all my Tailwind class names in this project. 
like that. And now let's move on to the theme section. This is where you add all your customizations in Tailwind version 3. Anything defined above the extend section here completely replaces Tailwind's default settings for the specified keys. So the screen's key right here, for example, replaces all default breakpoints with these three new ones that I defined, meaning these will now be the only breakpoints available in this project. If you use the colors key here, it will completely replace Tailwind's default color palette for this project. So make sure that you only use keys outside the extend section if you know exactly what you need for your project. Most of the time, you probably just want to extend Tailwind's built-in styles or override just a specific color or font size. And for that, you can use the extend section down here. With this part here, we add the color Twitter blue, but without affecting the default color palette. So we're simply adding a new color. And with this part here, we override the color option orange 500. But again, this only affects this specific shade, not the entire color palette, because we define it inside the extend section. In version four, all of this customization now goes into a global CSS file. So let me show you how to achieve the same customization with the new Tailwind version. For that, we navigate into the top level CSS file index.css. This has to be the same file where we also import Tailwind CSS. And in here, we can now add the add theme directive. With the theme directive, we define special CSS variables that are also called theme variables. And in here, we can now add dash dash breakpoint dash sm, copy this line two times, change this to md for medium and lg for large. Then we copy the values from the project with Tailwind version 3 into the project with Tailwind version 4 and save. And since the theme directive kind of works like the extend section in the tailwind.config.js file, we just redefined those three breakpoints, uh, but did not replace all default breakpoints with that. However, if we want to achieve uh, exactly that, in version four, we need to add, uh, we need to set the entire namespace to initial. So we would need to add dash dash breakpoint dash asterisk initial like that. And now we get the same results as we get with the screens key in the Tailwind version three project. So this now brings the same results as that. Next, we also want to achieve this. And that's also pretty easy. If you want to add a color like Twitter blue in version four, you just have to add dash dash color dash Twitter blue, and then add the hex code like so. And if you want to override a specific color option, just add dash dash color dash, let's say orange 500. And again, add the hex code like that. And that's it. So basically, if you create a variable in here and the name is already taken, you override the value of it. And if the name is not taken, you create a new theme variable. One last important change that you need to know is that the names have changed. So in version three, it was called screens. In version four, it's called breakpoints. In version three, it's called colors and in version four, it's called color and so on. I'll put a link to an overview of the namespaces in the description box down below. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, destroy the like button and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.